the most famous steam locomotive in the world is Flying Scotsman. This is the engine which opens our review of the steam locomotives of the old London and Northeastern Railway, which were bequeathed to British Railways upon its formation in 1948. It was, in fact, the first express passenger engine to be produced for the LNER, only two months after its formation in February 1923. After the war, the LNER reorganized its locomotive numbering policy to keep all locomotives of any particular type in sequence. It was an extension of its classification system, which was the most logical of all the British Railway companies. The system consisted of a letter to designate the arrangement of the wheels on a particular type of engine, and a number to indicate the different locomotive variations within the broader alphabetical nomenclature. Therefore, we start, naturally enough, with Class A1, which was the final independent LNER express passenger design. This is number 60120 Kittyweight, which was the seventh of A.H. Peppercorn's six-foot, eight-inch driving wheel express passenger design, the final development of the Flying Scotsman type of engine. Wheel diameters were an important factor in the type of work for which a locomotive was suitable. As the larger the wheel, the faster the engine would go for a given number of revolutions, these being limited by the speed with which steam could be admitted and ejected from the cylinders. Conversely, smaller wheels gave lower speeds, but a greater torque effect, so good strains engines had smaller wheels. The A series was for Pacific engines, that is, those with six large driving wheels, four carrying wheels at the front and two at the rear. This is described as a 462 but known by the nickname Pacific. Many of these nicknames came from the United States, including this one. The engine we now see was the first of the A1's W.P. Allen, and it's working a rail enthusiast tour in the 1960s. 49 of these A1's were built, but they were all withdrawn from use between 1962 and 1966, without any being preserved. Such is the enthusiasm for steam locomotion in the 1990s, that a project has been set up to build the 50th engine of this class by the turn of the century to be numbered 60163 and named Tornado. The A2 classification covered a mixed bag of locomotives. This is an A2 stroke 3, number 6523, named Suncastle. This was built by Peppercorn's predecessor Thompson, who had ideas which were slightly out of step with conventional thinking including the placing of the cylinders very far back in the frames. This gave a very long engine with a smaller proportion than usual of its weight over its driving wheels, which meant the addition was not very great, leading to a lot of slipping. Peppercorn revised the design to produce the A2. Without a subdivision, the stroke three of the previous type indicates a variation with an anomaly similar design of locomotive. These Peppercorn A2s were the most powerful type of Pacific in use on VR and had six foot two inch driving wheels to give them a wider use than on purely express passenger duties. This locomotive, Blue Peter, is preserved and is seen firstly in the last days of steam on British railways and then at the Didcot Steam Locomotive Preservation Center on a demonstration run. Flying Scotsman reappears now. This engine belongs to class A3 and is the only preserved example. Little needs to be said about her other than the fact that she's named after a classic racehorse. The name also applies to a famous train which is still operated by British Rail, but this is the locomotive Flying Scotsman. <laughs> 
These views show Scotsman at work on the Cumbrian coast from her northern base at Carnforth. Her owners also operate a franchise to run steam excursions on British rail metals under the title Flying Scotsman Services, or FSS, from Carnforth. The Flying Scotsman itself was the only steam engine permitted to run over British rail metals from mid-1968 until 1971, due to a contract which its then owner, Alan Pegler, had with the nationalised business. As a result, the locomotive has always had a special place in preserved railway circles, and this has led on to the business of promoting steam specials. FSS now organises steam workings for virtually every weekend of the year throughout the country and owns the unique train set of Pullman and First Class coaches which are used on these. Crossing the Esk Viaduct in Cumbria is the complete Flying Scotsman Services lineup of locomotive and train. Flying Scotsman was, of course, only one of a class of engines. This was the A3 class, designed by the redoubtable Sir Nigel Gresley. He was a believer in a big engine policy. And his first express design, at that time designated A1, was this Pacific class. The first engine was built in 1922 for the Great Northern Railway, and Flying Scotsman was the third of the type built. The design was later updated to become a new class, the A3, to which pattern all the earlier A1s were altered. They ran on top-line express work until the early 1960s, still being updated as late as 1958-59, when many of them received double exhausts and chimneys and the rather peculiar smoke deflector plates alongside the smoke box, which were known as German deflectors because of their similarity to those found on German locomotives. The A3 design was the springboard for Sir Nigel Gresley's famous A4 design. In the 1930s, railways were still the leading form of transport, and streamlining was in vogue for achieving higher speeds. The A3 design was taken as a basis for a high-speed design to mark the Silver Jubilee of King George V in 1935, operating a prestige streamlined train between London and Newcastle. The streamlining applied equally to the exterior and interior of the locomotive, with all steam pipes and exhaust passengers benefiting from scientific research to minimize resistance. The front end design was known as the Bugatti nose, as it was evolved through wind tunnel tests at the French car manufacturer's premises. Even after the war, the class broke speed records. This is the fastest post-war run of any steam locomotive, 112 miles an hour in May 1959, behind Sir Nigel Gresley, the 100th Pacific built for the great man's designs. The engine is with us today, now sporting a garter blue livery, and is seen on an excursion from London's Maryland Terminus. It was bought directly out of service for preservation. <laughs> 
The engine has been seen in many parts of the country and has already had three overhauls, the latest bringing it back into action in the early 1990s. British Rail's conditions for allowing steam engines to operate on its lines include the requirement for a full overhaul every seven years and six monthly inspections by its own staff. Running a preserved engine can be a very expensive business and the various locomotive societies constantly need new members and funds to enable them to keep the engines on the rails. All those permitted to run their engines over BR metals belong to the Steam Locomotive Operators Association, a body set up to coordinate their activities and to ensure a fair distribution of the work available, giving us the tremendous variety of steam power to be seen today. Sir Nigel Gresley was numbered 6007 in British Railway's ownership, and another preserved engine, 6009, reminds us of their appearance in the 1950s and 60s in the BR Green livery. This engine was originally named Union of South Africa when Great Britain was proud of its empire. It was one of a series built to work another of the streamlined expresses of the 1930s, the Coronation, to celebrate the accession of King George VI. By the late 1980s, the name of South Africa had become politically unacceptable, so the engine bore the name Osprey for a period of two years. However, in the early 90s, politics had changed again and the engine was to resume its real name. It's based in Scotland and owned by the chairman of BR Scott Rail. It's very much the rail mascot for the country. No fewer than six of these engines have been preserved, and three of them were lined up in 1988 outside the National Railway Museum at York to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the event that was to put the A4s, and one in particular, in the record books and history. The three engines were 4468 Mallard, 4498 Sir Nigel Gresley, and 2509 Silver Link, in the striking silver-grey livery used for the Silver Jubilee train of 1935. In 1938, Mallard set the all-time world record for steam traction at 126 miles an hour on the LNER's East Coast Main Line. Naturally, she's preserved, and in 1986 was restored to working order, visiting London during her period of Main Line working. The engine illustrates the full streamlining that was applied to these engines as built, with valances over the driving wheels. These were removed during the war to ease maintenance. Mallard was chosen for the record run attempt, officially a braking test, as it was the first to be fitted with a double chimney and exhaust, the final development of the Gresley Pacific story. Here she's setting off on one of the tours promoted in 1988 in connection with the celebrations.
1988 also saw 150 years of travelling post offices. A mallard was used to celebrate that event. They are seen on part of a tour which went from London to the northeast over a period of three days. Preserved A4s we haven't seen are in North America. Dwight D. Eisenhower in the USA and Dominion of Canada in Canada. However, in 1991, a 7th A4 was seen, number 60027 Merlin. The magician had waved his wand over Union of South Africa to recreate a long lost engine for a few weeks. The Scottish flagship having been renumbered and renamed whilst on a visit to England. The A series also included a number of humble tank engines, principally in the northeast. The class A5 stroke 2 was a Pacific tank built by Gresley as an update of an earlier design for the Great Central Railway. 13 were built for use on the ex Northeastern Railway network around Newcastle. The native Pacific tanks were of classes A6 to A8, 45 of the latter being the largest class numerically, one of which is seen here. B indicates a 460. The B1s were designed by Gresley's successor, Edward Thompson. Whereas Gresley had built quite sophisticated designs with three cylinders, Thompson went for the classic simplicity of two outside cylinders. His B1s were the standard mixed traffic type of engine in the immediate post-war period, having been built from 1942, with the last being constructed by British Railways in 1950. They'd replaced many different types of locomotive from the LNER's constituent companies and were to be seen all over the system. They'd proved to be amongst the last LNER classes in service, 410 of them having been built. Two survive today, both on the Great Central Railway, where we see 1306 on a demonstration run, showing once again the method of picking up mailbags by a travelling post office. This engine didn't bear a name in service, but now carries the name Mayflower, which was born by one of its less fortunate sisters, 1379. Here it's seen on loan to Birmingham Tisley Museum. The Great Central and Tisley are closely connected with many of the latter's engines now at work on the former main line of the Great Central Railway. The B3 to B9 classes were of Great Central origin. But the next class to survive in any numbers into BR days was the Great Eastern B12 class. The original members of this inside cylindered 460 type were drafted to work in Scotland, where their small boilers gave them wide route availability. Many others were rebuilt by Greslin, as were the other large class of pre-grouping 460s, the Northeastern B16s, 70 of which dated from 1919 to 1924. They were the last of the older type of 460 to go, some surviving until 1964. Sadly, none was preserved. This is one of the later rebuilds by Thompson, who produced a modern outline with exposed valve gear, making the class useful throughout the system, as seen here on the Great Central. The earlier rebuilds by Gresley were similar, but with Gresley's complicated form of valve gear, whereby the inside cylinder's valves were driven by a system known as derived or conjugated motion. This was used on his own B-17 or Sandringham class, produced specifically for use on the Great Eastern section, where turntables were too small to accommodate anything larger than these engines, which were equipped with very small tenders. A few locomotives in the C classification survived into BR days. Classes C-1 and C-2 were ex-Great Northern 442 or Atlantic tender engines. One of each is preserved at the National Railway Museum. And are seen in 1953 
when they were still working rather than static exhibits. There were more Atlantic tanks in the C series. These are members of the Great Northern C-12 class, an early suburban design from the 1890s, which were drafted onto country duties when replaced by later designs such as the N-2 tanks. The last went in 1958. The Great Central class C-13 tanks lasted a little longer, as did the enlarged version seen here, the C-14s. The last examples of each went in 1960. This one is working on an LNER outpost in Cheshire, whilst one of the earlier C-13s is seen in more conventional Great Central territory around Sheffield. Both types were used on local passenger services. They were designed by Robinson and built in the first decade of this century. Class C-15 was built in the second decade for the LNER's main Scottish constituent, the North British Railway. These handsome tank engines also ceased to exist in 1960. None of the Atlantic tank classes were preserved. Returning to Great Central Country, we see the first of the D-440s. This is a Great Central design of superheated express passenger locomotive, which was perpetuated by the LNER. These D-11s were built just after the First World War, and some carried names associated with that conflict. They were probably the Great Central's finest locomotives, despite many larger 460s. Those built by the LNER were specifically built to operate in Scotland on North British metals and had reduced height chimneys, cabs and domes. They were subclassified D11-2, whilst the original engines were D11-1. One of the originals has been retained by the National Railway Museum and has worked on loan on the present-day Great Central Railway, running in its original form as 506 Butler Henderson the only working preserved Great Central locomotive. Central of today intends to recreate the true mainline atmosphere by reconstructing its main line with double track. Here are the D11 double heads with a Great Western pannier tank. Great Eastern 440s formed the next class, D16. Once again, there were subdivisions, these being class D16 stroke 3s, seen at Kings Lynn in Norfolk. They were the survivors of a numerous class, often known as Claude Hamilton's, after the first of the type, of which 121 were built. Surprisingly, in view of the affection in which they were held, none were preserved. The 440 type was the most common for express passenger duties up until the beginning of the 20th century. So it's not surprising that most of the pre-grouping companies produced examples. This is class D20 of the Northeastern Railway, with a somewhat austere outline, whilst the engine that follows is from the North British and rather more elegant. The North British produced these class D30 Scott locomotives, which were named after characters and places in Sir Walter Scott's novels. A smaller wheeled variant for mixed traffic duties was the D34 Glen class of the same railway. Number 256 Glen Douglas is happily preserved and enjoyed some outings on the main lines in the early 1960s, as did number 49 of the Great North of Scotland Railway. This engine is the sole survivor of that railway's locomotive stock and is class D40. Sadly, both these engines have now become static museum pieces in Glasgow Transport Museum but their magnificent pre-grouping liveries are perhaps better displayed that way. Class D49 was the only class of 440 built to a new design by the LNER. Two series existed, the Stroke Ones being Shires and the Twos Hunts. These are examples of the latter type, 
built to replace pre-grouping 440s for restricted routes in the northeast. Taking one pair of wheels off a 440 gives a 240, the E series. Only one class of 240 came into British Railways Eastern Region's hands, the Great Eastern Intermediate type. Classified as E4 by the LNER, these little engines were very useful for secondary routes, and 28 out of 100 built survived until 1954. Thereafter, they were rapidly withdrawn, but number 490 was preserved, but not in working order. The tank version of the E4s was the Great Eastern F6, a 242 type. These were used all over East Anglia on local services and designed by Wurzdorf, who later went to the North Eastern Railway and produced a very similar looking type of engine, the G5 class. These were 044 tanks, the only engines of this type to last into BR days from the LNER. Six coupled engines makes up the J classes, the 060 being the commonest pre-grouping freight locomotive type. They varied widely in outline, from the simple J6 of the Great Northern to the quite curvaceous J11 of the Great Central. These little engines were known as pom-poms and lasted until 1963. The Great Eastern contribution was class J15, a very small locomotive, but one survivor today illustrates the glorious Great Eastern Prussian Blue locomotive livery on the North Norfolk Railway. scenes were taken when the North Norfolk celebrated the centenary of services to Holt, now its western terminus. Sheringham is the headquarters, and it's the only surviving part of the erstwhile Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway, and the only preserved railway in East Anglia. Note the coaches. These are from the former electric Brighton Bell of the Southern Railway, now in use as hauled stock. The Great Eastern also had some larger O60s of classes J19 and 20 whilst the classification J21 describes the northeastern class which once numbered 201 examples. These were the smallest of the numerous northeastern O60s, and number 65033 has been preserved at Beamish Museum in County Durham. This is a J25, the next variety. Heading towards Beamish and Consett is the next northeastern O60 of class J27. These were substantial locomotives, 105 of which were constructed between 1906 and 1923. Many survived to the very end of steam in the northeast in 1967, and this one has been preserved on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway as Northeastern Railway number 2392. is also from the northeast of England, but wasn't an LNER engine. It worked on the privately owned system at Lambton Colliery. The North British Railway contributed another long-lived class, the J36. These were built from 1888 to 1900 and four lasted until 1967. 168 were built, and 25 of them went to France during World War I. On the return, they were given commemorative names, and 65243 Maud is preserved in Scotland. 
In June 1986, it made a memorable run through the Scottish Highlands to Inverness for a BR Open Day, with somewhat inappropriately matched coaches. Moore is owned by the Scottish Railway Preservation Society and was used on BR lines throughout the 1980s. In December of the same year, it worked a series of special trains around Edinburgh for the Christmas season, on this occasion for the benefit of Dr Bernardo's children. The North British also had some larger 060s of classes J35 and J37. 64596 is one of the latter, another long-lived class with the last members going in 1967. Due to the general simplicity and effectiveness of the 060, the LNER contributed some of its own pattern, classes J38 and J39, to a design by Gresley. The only difference was in wheel size. The first one we see is a J38, and the second a J39, the only visible differences being the small splashes of the latter. Building continued up until 1941, 289 J39s and 35 J38s, none survive. J50 tanks were Gres's standard shunting engines for the Great Northern Railway before he became CME of the LNER. Visibility was helped by the cutaway fronts to the side tanks, their predecessors were the Stirling J-52 saddle tanks, one of which was to become the first standard gauge steam engine to be privately preserved. Here it works in 1990 on the Middleton Railway in Leeds, the very first standard gauge preserved line. The engine was bought by Captain Bill Smith, who subsequently donated it to the National Railway Museum. In 1991, it travelled across the Atlantic to appear at the Sacramento Steam Fair in the USA. A rather oddball 060 tank follows. This is a Great Eastern J69 engine, built for the intensive commuter traffic in East London. The LNER transferred it to the border country and fitted it with a tender, this becoming the only tender tank engine type in British Railway stock. To complete the transformation, it became a freight engine. J71 was a class of North Eastern Railway 060 tank, of which the 120 examples were all scrapped by 1961. They were the larger progenitors of the next class, J72, which had a remarkable history. The earliest members of the class were built in 1898 and 99, when 20 were constructed. Further batches were built in 1914 and 1920 to 22. The York Station pilot was one of the latter. After grouping, a further 10 were produced in 1925, but most remarkably of all, 28 were built by British Railways in 1949 to 51.
69023 is one of the latter and has been preserved on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway as Joem in the station pilot livery seen earlier. It's in constant demand, but being relatively small can only really be used for demonstration trains on the NYMR, as here. In recent years, it's been lent to other railways, most notably to the East Somerset Railway at Cranmore, where we see it heading east. We now move on to the K classes, a 260 or mogul type. Thompson produced a standard class K1, one of which is owned by the same group who own Joem, the Northeastern Locomotive Group or Nelpeg. The engine has a BR certificate and has worked a number of seasons on the West Highland Line in Scotland, including a run over the main line to Glasgow. Various moguls of the K classes worked in Scotland in LNER and BR days. Here's one of the K1s leaving the West Highland terminus at Fort William, and another one double heading one of the earlier Gresley design class K2 moguls near Roy Bridge. These latter engines bore the names of locks and were originally built for the Great Northern Railway. All had gone by 1963. Those transferred to Scotland had side window caps and altered boiler fittings such as chimneys. Gresley's first moguls were the K3s. These had six-foot diameter boilers and were considered to be enormous engines when first introduced in 1920. 193 were produced. Only six engines were built of the next class, the K4 mogul. They were light three-cylinder machines built specifically for the West Highland line. One was rebuilt by Thompson, who hated all things built by Gresley, but one survived, number 3442, the great Marquis. Here she's seen on a mid-1960s rail tour in southern England when she was first restored. And then we turn our attention to her as she works once again on the line she was built for, the West Highland. <laughs> 